On Saturday, city police arrested 29-year-old James Bolin for attempted murder as part of an ongoing investigation into an incident that took place on James Street on May 16th. Police located the accused Saturday morning and took him into custody. He's charged with one count of attempted murder, one count of assault with a weapon, one count of weapons dangerous, and one count of unlawfully in a dwelling. He was held for bail court. City Police, EMS and Sioux Fire Services responded to a two-vehicle collision on Queen Street near Dennis on Sunday afternoon. According to a bystander at the scene, one vehicle smashed into the Hollywood Electric bike store. No reports of major injuries. Both vehicles and the store sustained major damage. The collision is said to have happened around 3 p.m. Sunday. No other details are available at this time. An intense storm system moved across the U.S. Southern Plains yesterday, spawning tornadoes that caused scattered damage and a deluge of rain, but not the particularly dangerous twisters that forecasters had actually feared. No injuries were reported. Late yesterday, the National Weather Service reduced the severe threat of violent storms to a small area of southern Oklahoma and northern Texas, but it kept an area stretching from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Wichita Falls, Texas, under tornado watch until 5 this morning. Multiple funnel clouds were spotted in the region. The biggest threat overnight appeared to be flash flooding from torrential rains that accompanied the storms. Heavy rainfall hit the Tulsa, Oklahoma area and many vehicles became stuck on flooded streets. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told hundreds of attendees at a conference in Toronto yesterday that Canada's thriving technology sector is a result of the country's openness to immigrants and he hopes that Canadians will continue to view immigration positively. Trudeau was the first keynote speaker at the four-day conference called Collision, which is being held in Canada for the first time. Organizers are calling the event North America's fastest growing technology conference and this is the first time it's being held outside the U.S. While being interviewed by the CEO of Canadian entertainment company Broadband TV, Trudeau stressed that Canada has become a major source of talent for tech all over the world and that it is attracting entrepreneurs to the country. He also cited the federal government's investments in education and research as reasons for success in Canadian companies and startups. The Sioux Theatre Workshop is bringing God and the Indian to Sault Ste. Marie. This play, written by Ojibwe playwright and author Drew Hayden Taylor and directed by Randy Houston Jones, explores the process of healing via dialogue, exploring what is possible when the abused meets the abuser and is given a free form for expression. The performance takes place at the Sioux Theatre Workshop, that's at 121 Pittsburgh Avenue, on Wednesday, May 22nd to Saturday, May 25th at 8 p.m. and on Sunday at 2 p.m. for a matinee. Tickets can be purchased at the Sioux Community Box Office in the Station Mall online at www.suectc.ca. On TV was at last evening's dress rehearsal to check it out. The play is about um, residential school survivor. Um, it's, a, it's basically a dialogue between um, the survivor and the person she believes was her abuser in the school. Uh, I'm very much, um, in pretty much all the plays, most of the plays that I do, um, there's usually um, a message that I think people need to hear or see to learn or understand about um, different issues or or things that people are dealing with so um, this is another one of those plays for me um, I've done a lot of reading on different First Nations um, plays and this particular one struck me uh, as an important issue that needs to be brought out to the general population um, I think people need an understanding of what um, what the effects are from the residential schools and the long-lasting long-term effects uh, from someone who has been through that that
travesty in my mind. The government has gone through reconciliation and and things like that, but as much as as much as it's it's good that you know the government of Canada has apologized and admitted that it happened. What's been done it doesn't really help the people that went through it. They still have their their own personal demons to fight and and reconciliation is only a small part of it and I find often the general population will go well you know that's been taken care of but but it hasn't and people need to understand what long-lasting effects um, that that people live with this role in particular uh, does have some connection back to that very first uh, uh, influence of, of recognizing the value of theater as an educational instrument. And in this particular play, uh, I was not eager to audition for it at first, and uh, Randy uh, can also attest that I wanted to see a script first. This is a sensitive topic for, I think, anyone. Uh, I think there's been a reasonable balance found here for a very unbalanced uh, part of our history. To bring the message across honestly and as clearly as it was written is a real challenge. So we've been very particular about our phrasing and our wording. And uh, when, you, when you have that much dialogue for just two players, that's a challenge unto itself. This play uh, is a way of saying here's Here's a story with some considerable depth to it, and it allows people the time and opportunity to absorb it. And of course, it is our hope that after the, the theater goes dark and people head home from having been a patron of that evening's performance, that they will take some of this play with them.